Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And as promised earlier, we have a very interesting topic under discussion this morning on The Breakfast Show and what to do with your kids uh, during the uh, mid-year vacation. How can we have uh, quality time with our children, entertain them at the same time and not become overwhelmed or drained? And I'm delighted to be joined in the studio this morning by my guest, Dr. Nosli Said, human development expert in family relations. Dr. Nosli, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Good morning. Doctor, so that's lots, lots to talk to you about. Uh, the kids, are now in the mid-year uh, vacation most of them and for some parents it's a challenging time because you really don't know what to do with the children but I'm sure there are ways to entertain them uh, at the same time to develop some of their capacities um, and how would you suggest the best way to spend this time with your children I would suggest just let it be as it is okay. I mean don't try to plan anything don't try to really control them don't try mm. to put anything into your mind except that um, they just need to be themselves. They, 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 the kids know what they need. You know, if you yeah. just leave them, they will tell you. Mm -hmm. if, I, if they feel bored right now, they'll tell you, I'm feeling bored, I'd like to do so and so. You just let them do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. Things will just flow. Mm -hmm. I believe it's more about us as parents that we like to put our, our kids into like um, a certain um, mold. Uh, schema, yes, yes. or mode yes. or something that we ourselves, this satisfies us not satisfying them. Mm -hmm. If you just let them, they will just be. But don't you like need to, you know, guide a bit like we can't just let them the whole day just play or watch TV or on the screen. I mean, can't you like guide them a bit like try and make like a daily uh, schedule maybe what are we going to plan the day? Is that a way to deal with the children? <laughs> yes, as a parent, definitely we do guide because mm -hmm. this satisfies us before satisfying them. Mm -hmm. We feel really fulfilled that we have done our role, that we're, we're good parents, mm -hmm. we're doing whatever we should be doing for our kids. We're not just letting them go and mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. but again I would tell you that letting the kids just play this is learning already because it's playing is one of the, the methods that kids really do get their, their experience and they get to know about things they explore it's just like having a scientist in the lab that you just get the kids into the, the the play area or even not in the play area even if you just let them and then they start discovering you know some kids they would just go into uh, uh, the bathroom and they, they fill the, the, the tub with some water and they put their toys yeah. and they start playing and then they discover what will float what will sink what mm. will happen mm. these are all experiences we think that they're just playing mm. they're just wasting time mm. what are you doing no they are experiencing things discovering what's happening around the world mm -hmm. for them yeah. right so doctor let's talk a bit about so say the kids say they're bored for example uh, how can we you know fill up their time with fun things to do what would you suggest um, uh, lots of uh, you know uh, human development experts suggest like taking your kids out experiencing new places uh, touristic sites for example or museums or the zoo you know enrichment uh, little day trips what would you suggest in this regard Definitely, I go with them in, in, in all these aspects. There's no issue about all that, mm. but you can take them out, you can let them play, you can let them inside the house, you can do anything they want. Mm. The, 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 the aspects are very different, and mm. they are, they are, there's a vari variety of stuff that they, the kids can really do. Mm. But like I would. Before, yes, I, I, I want examples. Sure, <laughs> I want examples. <laughs> okay. I want examples. Um, I mean, you can take them, yes, to visit all the, the touristic uh, um, places that mm. we have. Egypt is full of wonderful places you can take them to the zoo you can um, go for sports you can go for educational stuff more about mental stuff but what I, what I w or even entertainment like uh, piano music drawing mm. everything mm. but I would start with start exploring your your kid first mm -hmm. I mean I would I would I would go for um, let me see what my kid is interested in mm. What is his passion? Mm, identify their interests first. Exactly, mm. yes. Mm. Because some, some kids, they would go more for the motor skills. Mm. Uh, I would put them into more sports. And, and mm. even, th even though you, you would see, like, which sport would they fit in mm. more? Okay. Would I put them into an uh, individual sports mm. where it's sports. like, yes, mm. tennis or whatever? Mm. Or would they go for teams? Mm. Are they the challenging um, type of character? What, where would they really go? Where would where? If I put them, uh, would they really flourish and shine and they find themselves being fulfilled? This I would say the point because otherwise, no matter how many um, uh, errands you would put your, your, your kids in mm. or you try to keep them busy, it's going to be just like ticking into the box. Mm. I'll give you lots of stuff to do. Yalla, let's go out today mm. and uh, then you go for the sports and then you sit and read and then you watch TV and then whatever. 
they were still at the end of the day, they, they will feel bored or, or not satisfied enough mm. because they didn't feel that their soul is really filled with what they really want, the passion that they want. But if you just like spend like an hour a day doing what you really want, what you really love, what you really feel that mm. you're, you're there in it, that's it. Makes the world of a difference, yes, doesn't exactly. it? Yes, exactly. Right, Doctor, I want to ask you a couple of other questions. How ca w would you encourage uh, getting kids involved in household chores? Of course. And from what age? And hopefully you're going to say two, two, two genders, boys and girls, yes. get to do household chores. <laughs> Whatever so, you say, yes, yes. please. <laughs> So um, how can we encourage them to, you know, start, you know, just putting their plate in the sink, washing their cups, uh, helping with the laundry, yeah. tidying up their toys, etc. And from what age should we start this? Um, I would say uh, as early as possible, as, 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 um, as early as they can really understand. <laughs> yeah, understand and master their, their, their motor skills. They can walk, they can grab stuff, they can hold, you can just tell the kid just okay collect your clean up collect your toys and just put them back into the box mm. whatever it's just as simple as that mm. up to like okay let's clean the the, the basin uh, you're going to wash the dishes put them in the washing machine put the laundry in the machine whatever you need mm. yes you can of course because the least we can say about this it's like you're like building a character into the kids mm. the, you are putting some responsibilities and making them understand that building the personality and the character of a, of a really responsible um, grown-up mm. uh, man or mm. woman, it's there. It starts with these very simple st things. Mm -hmm. If you just leave your stuff, you don't care. Uh, I mean, if you just like them scattered everywhere, you leave also your work. You leave your files later on on your desk scattered everywhere. You wouldn't really care about where are the, these things. What am I supposed to be doing today? Mm. But if you learn that you're really responsible, this is your issues. If you don't take care of them, nobody will take care of them for you. Um, and also this teaches them, I mean, organization and, and management teaches also self-organization and self-management mm -hmm. later on, mm -hmm. where you can manage by your emotions, manage your anger, ma manage everything about yourself if mm -hmm. you manage your stuff. So, yes, I agree with you, mm -hmm. both genders, as early as possible. <laughs> yes, please. Uh -huh. And it keeps them busy too. Mm. And you know, this is the least to say, yes, it keeps mm -hmm. them busy. And mm -hmm. they feel like, I believe... My kids feel they are, they are really doing something. They have a part in this house. They, they are doing really something that's important because I'm part of this place and I'm responsible for it and I have a role in it. It's just like making them feel more about their identity here. Mm -hmm. They belong to that place and they, they really have a hand and give something. They, mm -hmm. they do something to be really uh, feeling good about it here. Mm -hmm. Right. Dr. Nazli, let me ask you, at what age do you think it is suitable or acceptable uh, or feasible to leave your child alone at home? I would say it differ differs uh, about the, the, the personality and mm. the traits of the, of the character of the kid. Mm. Some kids, um, they are usually calm. Um, you can really trust their, their uh, reactions. Their, they wouldn't like go into creativity of any destructive uh, <laughs> ideas. <laughs> yes. and, yeah. mm. and also, not, not only destructive, I wouldn't say destructive, but I would say um, they want to discover mm. if they just go like um, okay mommy's not here now I'd like to go and discover so and so mm. because uh, that I can. Stuff is exactly <laughs> that I stuff. can <laughs> yeah this mm. stuff uh, I've been uh, prohibited to, to touch muscle mm. and the mm. the mm. Uh, the oven or whatever so if I can trust my kid I put them into the test sometimes I just mm. leave like for at the start I'll start leaving them for like 15 minutes maybe mm. and then I come back not telling them that I'll be back in 15 minutes. Mm. Maybe I watch them from behind anywhere mm. and I would see um, their behavior while I'm not around mm. in a way or another. We can't all do that. We have cameras everywhere mm. and stuff. Mm. I'm not saying that we do have an eye on mm. them, but I mean just to be trusting that they're safe, mm. to keep them safe and to keep them good. Mm. But I wouldn't recommend before yeah, age-wise, age. mm. yeah, not, not before 11 or 12 minimum. Because it's not only, I mean, the dangers now, are they are, their safety mm. is not only for the physical danger mm. now. It's more about if you leave the house and you leave the internet open and you yeah. leave everything. I mean, there is still mm -hmm. the, their, yeah, their responsibility and their mm. mental awareness is very important because th this level of it, it, it does... Um, yeah, it does make a difference mm. if, if they are and aware what to watch, what mm. to do, how to interact with other people. Mm. What, if I, what if I just like uh, find... I, I decided that I want to watch a certain program and then it's not adequate. Suitable. Yes, mm -hmm. or, or suitable. What would I and do? And I think with the pandemic and the coronavirus and online learning, kids from such a young age have been exposed to online 
learning to the screen, to the opportunities that are online, which has made things worse, really, and more difficult. Yes, we're exposed. Yani it's, it's, yani it's unavoidable. It is unavoidable. Mm. Yani we, we, cannot, we, ca we cannot close everything. You cannot prohibit anything yeah. because now what we can do is, yes, we're open. We have to accept that. We're open to the world. Actually, everything is available for them. Mm. It's not like old ages where you just like go like, uh, close the TV, just put it off, you mm -hmm. cannot watch that, mm -hmm. or you cannot do that now. Because mm -hmm. even if you do it, they're going to get that through their, their friends, uh, through other channels in life. Mm -hmm. What you can really do is put some awareness in them, teach them what's right, what's wrong. I wouldn't say right and wrong. I mean, again, it's part of everything. But I would say, teach them what's suitable for them, mm -hmm. what's acceptable, acceptable for yes. them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would go also for the religious part. What mm -hmm. would God accept what we wouldn't? Mm -hmm. What would he be happy for us if you do that or not? Mm -hmm. That's the, uh, the core. Really. Yes. That's the core. Yes. <laughs> so tell me, doctor, how long, is, how long should we allow screen time? Because this varies. I mean, some parents are strict, stringent. Um, I personally find when I restrict screen time at home, even though it's more overwhelming for me as a parent, but they're at a better place. They're more focused. Um, they're more, you know, engaged. The longer the screen time, the less focus I find, um, you know, they're distracted. And so uh, what range would you give screen time per day? Like I TV? Agree. I agree totally. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go more than two hours a day, not more than two hours a day because in all screens, I mean, mm -hmm. TV, uh, mobile, okay. laptop, mm -hmm. everything, just as screens mm -hmm. because Yes, you're right, definitely, because their mind gets distracted, mm. distorted. They focus only on the TV. It's, there, there's no interaction. There's no human interaction mm. into the, the screen. You're just like receiving all the time. Mm. And the mind is doing nothing except taking the info that's the screen giving to them. Mm. First of all, you don't know what kind of info they're receiving mm. and which kind of info are they filtering, mm. which one of them they are really absorbing and not letting... Um, uh, their, their mind really see what's, what's, what's okay, what's not okay. Why am I being told this? Which source is telling me mm -hmm. this kind of info? I mean, that's too much for the kids. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, the, 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 I, if, I, if I go from the technical part, the, um, the screens, they are full of vibrations. Mm -hmm. They're full of, I mean, these are not good rays for the brain. And, yes, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. rays and vibrations and radiations mm -hmm. and all these things. Mm -hmm. um, they do affect the, the brain cells, which is in a very negative way. Mm -hmm. So just like avoiding this and giving more in time for quality time, mm -hmm. sitting together, talking together, this allows more into human development uh, skills, just like communication, uh, feelings, mm -hmm. you know, you develop your feelings. Yes, you it's very important, I find, to discuss your child's feelings, yes. you know, I mean, when they're frustrated and they're screaming and shouting, sometimes it's irritating, but you actually need to, you know, admit, okay, I understand you're frustrated, tell me why, and just to, you know, break it down for them. How important is uh, speaking about your feelings, not just feeling your feelings, but, yeah. you know, calming down eventually, especially at a younger age, they go through rage fits, etc. How can we deal with this kind, and especially during the holidays, be careful. Uh, you know, school is amazing in that when they go to school and come back, they're exhausted. It's just lunch, homework, bath, sleep, hopefully, and that's it. But when they're sitting at home, there's more free time and um, they get bored. So frustration appears in different ways with children. Um, yes, definitely. <laughs> so what, all what you need is they need to feel safe. Mm. They need to feel emotionally safe. That's what I mean. Mm. If I feel safe, that I would really expose my emotions to you and talk to you and I'd really get them out and then I would see a reaction that you're containing me in a way, I would go for a hug, mm. first of all. If they're screaming and they have like this mm, yes. Uh, yes. trauma thing, and I don't know, but what would I do is mm. I just give them a hug and just start talking to them. Okay, mm. let's talk. Tell me how do you feel. Mm. And if they keep on screaming and they keep on going on into this whatever mm. mode, you start telling them, okay, I feel what you feel. Mm. I, can, I can really feel, mm. yes, mm. give them empathy. the empathy, all mm. the empathy, and let them understand that it's really safe that I would talk it out if I just talk it out and give out all my emotions. Mm. I won't be spanked. I won't be uh, shut out. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't punished be told, or, mm. yes, punished, or mm. even my emotions won't be like degraded Dismissed, and uh, there's yeah. no part for your emotions here. Mm. So I would, tr I try to protect myself by keeping these emotions shut in a way so I wouldn't expose them. But if you really encourage me to tell me, okay, speak, I'm hearing you, I'm here to listen, I've been into your place before, you know, you're not the only one into this place, things happen, it will be fine, tell me how you feel, okay, tell me more about it. You just like 
encourage them to talk. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then they start talking, talking, mm -hmm. talking. When they start talking, they listen to their emotions. Mm -hmm. And when they listen to their emotions, they understand them. Mm -hmm. They would see and then they would really understand why am I feeling this feeling? Mm -hmm. Where does this feeling come from? Mm -hmm. Is it from me? Is it from someone else? Is it because someone else did something to me? When, why did, when, did, did, when they did that to me, why, why did, did that really me? affect me mm -hmm. in a way? Mm -hmm. What could I have done mm. to, to avoid that? Mm. And is there a different reaction that I could have been doing and then things would be better in that case? Mm -hmm. So they, if they start doing that, they just develop their emotions. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they dig deeper into themselves and they really know themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, All right, Doctor, I actually want to ask you something. Please. Um, <laughs> As mothers, usually we were very stressed about, you know, our children making mistakes or hurting themselves or, you know, making a mistake, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, etc. How important is it to allow your child, even though you can see it's going in the wrong direction and it's going to end up <laughs> badly, how important is it to allow them to make this mistake in order to learn from it? Because I usually find when, you know, you restrict them or say no or don't do this, don't do that, it's like they're persistent you know i'm gonna do it and only when they do the action and discover that it's a mistake only when they really not repeat it so yeah. how can <laughs> we allow ourselves to allow them to you know make the mistake okay. to learn from it yeah yeah it's hard <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's hard <laughs> yeah it's hard because it comes from your sense of responsibility yeah. towards them mm. you feel like i want to help I, I don't want them to fall into these mistakes mm. i've been there i don't want them to be in the same place mm. but if you can just start convincing yourself with several points like what you resist it persists if you stop it it will persist it will stay there mm. this mm. is number one number two let them just live their path it's it's their life you know but it's hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's hard <laughs> yes i understand it's but hard. let them try it mm. in a safe um, environment with you because whether we like it or not, when they grow up, they will be out into the world yeah. and they will try all these things and, and they will be exposed to different kinds of um, incidents, mm -hmm. uh, stuff that you don't, if, if, they, if they really don't know how, how to handle it or they don't have ex past trouble. experiences about it, mm. it will be a real shock for them. Mm. But if, if you have it like on a smaller scale, on a safer uh, scale, I would say in a good environment, then you'll be there for them. Mm. Just be there. Let them know that you're having their back and let them just do the mistake what will happen there's no mistakes any what will happen really nothing I you know, know. <laughs> we all did mistakes and then what yeah. happened here right we survived yeah we survived <laughs> yes we survived all right um uh, you said something very interesting before we went on air and you said it's about quality time not quantity time so when you spend time with your children it's not really about how many hours or how many minutes but the kind of time that you spent or the quality of even if it's 10 minutes a day yes. i mean with our lives and work and traffic and by the end of the day there's just really a couple of hours to be home how important is this quality time it's from dad and mom not yeah just mom. of course the, two, the most parents definitely mm. yes. <laughs> parents can do anything please yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go. Be to the table, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's about being there, present yes. in the moment. Yeah, not present. like sitting with them and on no, your phone or of course, reading it's a not book. physically present. Mm. No, it's more about the connection. Mm. If you're feeling connected, if if I'm here sitting with you and you feel me there, mm. looking at your eyes, feeling the feeling that you're feeling, um, being really present for you, I'm feeling for you, and I I can understand really what you what mm. you're trying to tell me, and you feel my presence. You feel that you're important. You feel that you're heard. You're seen. You're listened to. You're feeling then. This is, I mean, this is all what they do need. This is the quality time. Mm. But if I'm there like for several hours and they don't feel me there, mm. I'm just being around. Might as well be absent. Exactly. You are really absent mm. because you're not really there. Mm. There meaning I'm connected to you. Mm. Whatever, even if I'm moving around, but we're still connected to each other. Mm. Even eye contact. You know, you feel like if you need anything, I'm there for you. If you feel anything, I'm feeling the same feeling for you. Mm. We are here. We are together. We're bonded in a way. Mm -hmm. That's, that's it. But if I'm just there, sitting there telling you, okay, go play. Okay, do that. What do you want? Would you like to eat? Would you like to do? Th Anybody can do that, you know? <laughs> most moms do that, actually. <laughs> we all do that, by the way. Just, it's, I think it's just out of a sense of, you know, responsibility. I mean, yes. if you don't feed them or make sure that this, 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 this happens, who will? You know what I mean? Yes. So it, it's a trap, actually, that moms fall into. But yeah, exactly. So <laughs> let's do it not only, but also. Mm. Yeah, not only food mm -hmm. and doing, mm -hmm. let, let it also be more about the, the being there. Yeah. Yeah, do the doing, give them the food, mm. cook for them, and even like... Engage them with you. Let them come and cook with yeah, you. Yeah, that's Do something. Even like tiny, many, yani, mm. tiny stuff mm. with you in the kitchen. That mm. would really make a difference. They mm. feel 
being uh, really um, having your company with you also. Mm -hmm. Right. So speaking about stuff that we can do with our kids over the holidays, I mean, they're mostly at home. Um, give us ideas. For example, board games, uh, you know, activities, could they be fun and could they benefit from them at the same time? Yes, the, 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 the classical known ones, yes, the, the puzzles, the, um, um, the bricks, the, mm. all the mental games, uh, games mm. yes. But actually, what, what I would uh, really would like to introduce more also that the, the coaching skills, I mean, start to develop with them, mm. uh, where do they stand? I mean, give them some awareness about themselves. Um, I mean, let them understand and discover their characteristics, their mm. personal ca characteristics. Why do I get angry from certain stuff? How can you do that? Because mm. when, they, when they come and start telling you stories about things that happen with their friends, with their, with their school uh, colleagues, with their teachers, with, um, I mean, at the club, anywhere, when mm. they come and start telling you stuff about that, you start talking to them about it and then do, do some coaching with mm. them. Mm. Tell them, okay, and why do you think you felt this way? And if they start telling you, I felt so and so because that person was um, whatever, you start, start telling them, and who else does that for you? Mm. I mean, is he the only person that you feel like that being around or other people too? If it's mm. other people too, then okay, where, where do you see, do you see anything common here? Mm -hmm. You know, stuff mm. like that, mm. questions so like talking, self -discovery, self -discovery, mm. basics. Self-discovery, mm. basics, yes, because, mm. because when you really ra raise their awareness, mm. it's, it's everything. You, know, you can mm. stand, you know, only then you can yes, start leaving them at home alone. You can uh, trust that they are going to be safe around. They, they're understanding themselves, they know their needs, mm. they understand their passion, they, they will keep themselves entertained. If I understand who I am, what do I need, what are my goals, how do I keep myself happy, I will know how to and keep when myself when, what, what about, At what age, around what age do they reach that, you know, self-understanding? I mean, from when can they start feeling that, you know, they are self-aware? Again, it depends on us Give me a range, doctor. Give me okay. a range. <laughs> okay. It depends, huh. it depends on us as parents because mm. if I decide that I want to raise my kids in an awareness mode, I will start as early as like six or seven talking and I mean on this emotional, spiritual uh, awareness style. Mm. But again, you start preparing them ever since they start, I mean, two or three because the level, the way you interact with the kid mm. If, if you just act with them like, uh, okay, he's just a kid, he doesn't understand, mm -hmm. he's just a little boy, a little girl, and stuff like that, you're just diminishing their yeah. abilities. But if you really look at them in a way that, yes, you can, you, you are the creation of God, and you have such skills, and I'm going to invest in that, mm. let's do it. They will pick up on your energy, and they will see that, and they will really be interested, and it will, it will just like, okay, let's do that. Mm -hmm. So... Yes, don't be late, young. Okay, Six one final question because <laughs> we're running out of time. Your energy as a parent. Yes. This is very important. You know, a miserable parent is usually horrible. <laughs> uh, how important is it to, you know, cut yourself some slack as a parent, as a mom, as a dad, to ensure your own self-awareness and happiness and calmness in order to reflect that on your children? Okay, mm -hmm. energy is everything. Mm -hmm. It's everything, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. because... If you don't really um, convey what's inside, really outside, as is, mm. people will feel that you're fake. Your mm. kids already, they are on the same line as you. They are on the same, uh, I mean, uh, frequency, like mm. you exactly. Mm. So they pick up your energy, even if you don't talk. If you're feeling sad, if you're feeling gloomy or whatever, and if you don't want to show them that, but yeah. I, come, I come home with a smile and mm. hi and stuff mm. like that, they, they will really pick on you. Mm. They, they will pick it up. They mm. won't understand that, khalas mommy, she's good and things mm. are great. They, mm. they won't take that. Mm. They won't. So it's very important that we, number one, that we are authentic. Mm. What's inside is exactly like what's outside. Mm. Yes. No matter if how I'm, scary. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's just about how, how do you really express it? Yeah. It's fine to be sad. It's fine to be angry. But the way I express my anger mm. and show it and, and bring it out to the world, this is, this is the point. The challenge. Yes. yes. Mm. And show them that because you're teaching them now mm. how to really express themselves too. Mm -hmm. But of course, yes, managing my, my, my emotions, managing my energy, trying to be calm and setting an example and being the role model for them. Mm. Yes, that's it, it's, key. Yes, right. That's I'm afraid we've run out of time and ever so quickly. I'd like <laughs> thank to thank you. you very, very much, Dr. Nozli Said, Human Development Expert in Family Relations. Thank you so much for coming in this morning. Thank you so and much. And for all your insight. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, a short break. And we'll be right back to continue this edition of The Breakfast Show. Do stay tuned.